Hallo Deutschland, viel Spaß mit The Morning Show, Steifel 2. 2. You are Eric, the new guy. Uh, yeah. What do the other people think about Eric? Yeah, I think as soon as Eric gets to the show, Bradley and Alex are like, who the F is this guy? And one of the first things that you see when we open season two is everybody's kind of not into Eric coming in into the show because everybody at the show, whether it's Nestor or Reese or Jen, they have an agenda. They see the show as their own. They know their place on the show. And Eric comes in and he's shaking all that up for them. And so even as well-intentioned as Eric is, you know, nobody on the show really is, is as warm and welcoming as Eric would like them to be. Did you learn how to speak like an anchor? Because they sometimes have a strange way to say things. Uh, <laughs> yeah. How was that process? Yeah, I spent the last seven years of my career playing a fake TV anchor on The Daily Show and on Patriot Act. So this was a natural transition. I didn't have to act. I've been in, I've been in newsrooms like this either fictionally or in real life for the past, you know, almost decade of my life. So walking on set of The Morning Show totally felt natural. Now, doing dramatic scenes with Jennifer Aniston or Reese Witherspoon, that was not natural. That's not something I normally do. Um, so that was really new and interesting and fun. Are there any do and don'ts if you are a morning show superstar? I would say this. I think I, you're nailing one of them right now. You, you want to ideally be dressed well. You want to have a clean background behind you. Uh, obviously, I have the blue, you have the white right there. Uh, you don't have anything in your teeth. That's smart. Right For us here in California right now, it's right around lunchtime. You don't have anything in your teeth. Um, and generally, probably knowing your lines is, is really important. Being able to read prompter uh, and enunciate your words, that's really important. That's it. Read prompter is actually my cue. Oh, boy. I'm going to give it a try. But if I, tr if I try and it doesn't work, will you fix me? Sure. Sure. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hallo Deutschland. Did I say that right? Yeah. Sure. Uh, viel Spaß mit the morning show. Steifel. Two. Uh, Two. Zwei. 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 Very zwei. good pronunciation. Have you ever been to Germany? Never. I would love to. My mother-in-law works for Siemens. So shout out to Sandhya Patel who works for Siemens, she's been to Germany many a time. And she has been a Siemens employee for well over two decades. So we all loving the show in Germany. So you have to come to Germany and I will set up a morning show just uh, set just for you. Oh, great. I, I, I'd, love to enjoy, I'd love to come to Germany. Everyone hates spoilers. So could you sure. give us maybe two lies and one true thing that is going to happen in the morning show season? Two? Sure, sure, sure. Okay. So two lies and a truth. Yeah. Okay. Fair. Okay. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Okay. There's a plane accident. Um, there is um, a crisis that is happening in South America, and it's very, very, very important. And there is a character with great hair on the show. With great Definitely. hair. Great hair. Not good. Great. Great hair. Okay. I have kind of feeling that you are the guy with the great hair. I'm talking about Nestor. Nestor has phenomenal hair. But that is true. Yes. I only talk about series regulars. I'm just, I just have a recurring arc on this season. That was, that was my qualifying statement. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> okay. So thank you very much. Thank and you. Looking forward, and I'm trying to do like the anchor man here. But um, yeah, all the best to Los Angeles. Cheers, Cheers. thank you. Take thank care, you. peace. I am Daniel Rizzo from YouTube, and of course, this is the Rizzo News Show from Cologne, Germany. Hey, what's up, Rizzo News? I like your suit, looking sharp. Thank you very much, you too. And I think you are in Los Angeles right now. I am. It's always sunny in LA. In Cologne, Thanks. let's say it's getting rainy soon. In LA? No, in, in Cologne. Oh, oh, is, does that happen a lot in Cologne? Yes. In Germany, it's like that. Oh, no. Yeah. Come to LA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish, I wish. Next time, when everything is open again, yeah. we bring a show there.
So, Deshaun, your character, Daniel, let's be honest, should be on that chair. Now there's a new guy. Um, <laughs> what, what does Daniel experience? <laughs> what? What happens to him? What What is it that he, he says? Is it said in the first episode? He says, oh yeah, he says, Daniel says, I'm, I feel like I'm always taking shit. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think that's what uh, Daniel is experiencing. He's, he's still, he's frustrated in his job, but man, you gotta, you gotta give it up for Daniel because he is uh, determined and he fights even harder this season to um, uh, get his voice heard. And I think he, he, he definitely, I think he definitely makes some inways at different points within the season, right? Daniel's one of the first people to actually pick up on COVID, which I think is uh, very interesting that, you know, he had the foresight before most of the other journalists or the people on the news desk, which shows that, you know, he's a, you know, he's a viable candidate and should be, have a, a larger space within the morning show. So next to your character, Daniel, which one is your favorite in the show or maybe the, the least favorite? You know, I, I like them all, but I, I gotta say like, uh, uh, Yanko, the weatherman, <laughs> Uh, I just love, um, uh, what was it, um, Nestor was said, uh, he has a funny story because he said he always wanted to play a weatherman. <laughs> and uh, I think he's particularly really charming. Uh, and, and I also feel like I love the relationship between um, Nestor, with, between Yanko and Daniel. Uh, we see it a little bit, that they have a little bit of camaraderie. They're both, I think, this season and last season, they kind of go through the shit together. So it's like, I like to think of like uh, Yanko is like Daniel's uh, sidekick in, in some, or Daniel's his sidekick in some shape or form. They have a good work camaraderie. I think they see each other, they see themselves in each other. And he always has great advices for the weather. How would you describe a normal day in the morning show? A normal day in the morning show, the the the, the television show or, that we're shooting, or in the show within the show. In the show within the show. Oh, okay. I think it's there's a lot of infighting. It, it feels like Game of Thrones sometimes <laughs> because there's intense just conflict, there's personal crisis. I think every day that they show up to work, it they might even be surprised that they make it to the to the desk. <laughs> and that the show actually goes on air. On yeah, air, on yeah, air yeah, yeah. And I actually, you know, some of the scenes that I really like uh, this, this season, I won't give too much away for, for people, but some of the things I like is that when we see their personal uh, life crisis literally happening off stage while they're on stage and we have to run off and go deal with this and deal with that. It's just, I mean, yeah, these people are, 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 are kooky, crazy and fun to watch. <laughs> Deshaun, thank you very much. And I'm looking forward to season two of The Morning Show. Hey man, nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Danny Rizzo from YouTube. And of course, this is the Rizzo News Show. Hi Daniel, how are you? Fine. I'm here live from Cologne in Germany. And where are you right now? I am, I'm in Los Angeles. I'm here in LA uh, where I live. And uh, yeah, yeah. But I, I, I haven't been to Germany in a long time. I'd love to go back uh, when I'm able to. Oh, very good. How good is your German? It's fantastic. That is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. Uh, yeah, it's always sunny in, in Los Angeles. Right now it's getting dark here in Cologne. And yeah. you are the weatherman. At yes. The yes. You know, we in Germany, we have some ex expressions for weatherman. We say uh, Wetterfrosch, the weather frog. If you are a female, it's the weather fairy, uh, Wetterfee. Okay. Um, are there any expressions for uh, weatherman in, in, in the U.S.? You know, it, it's, it's changed. So it's interesting. It used to be weatherman. And then obviously, you know, with the, with the whole notion of gender, it became weather caster. And then it's changed now because a lot of weather, weather people, weather casters are, uh, are trained. They're, they're meteorologists. So now typically, you know, it used to be you didn't have to have a degree to do the weather. You just, you know, you were personality, you know, you figured out, you got, you got the you know stuff and you made a whole little uh, presentation. Now they're largely meteorologists. So you really, that's what they're called mostly now, meteorologists. So during shooting the morning show, did you actually learn something about meteorology? 
I did, I did. I mean, I, I didn't go and st get my degree, but I did, I did meet with uh, a famous uh, weathercaster who's not a meteorologist, a, a local one, Fritz Coleman, and I got to, to meet with him. I got to go to the studio at KNBC and, and watch him work and uh, was eye-opening, extraordinary. I learned so much from him about, you know, the craft of what he does, you know, of, of, of uh, you're, you're a human accordion of time. So you're asked to fill in time, either it's 20 seconds or 40, and you've got to be prepared to talk about something uh, and expand on it, and maybe talk about your friends in, you know, in Cologne and your, you know, your other friends in Munich who are suffering from this, this, and that. So you've got to be able to vamp and make silly jokes, you know, in between telling the weather if you're asked to stretch time, or the opposite, if you're asked to cut time, say I only have 10 seconds, uh, you got to do all that in 10 seconds. So it's an it's a fine art, and then you have to connect, obviously, and try and connect with the viewer and make it personal to them, and say this weekend uh, you may want to wear your galoshes because it's going to be raining in Cologne. It's going to be about two inches of rain, so be careful if you're going to do that picnic. You may want to switch it to Monday if you can, if at all possible. You know, you've got to try and connect with them personally. A lot of it is that, and uh, and it's all improv improvisational. All, none of it is scripted. So, um, how would you describe in season two the the more the work environment in yeah. the morning show? You know, the work environment is tense. You know, I've suffered. You know, speaking selfishly from Yanko's perspective. I've suffered a loss and in, in, in my girlfriend leaving me and all, all, all that. But everybody has gotten through. Uh, Alex Levy has gone through some kind of a, a, a brutal uh, sort of emotional breakdown. Uh, you know, I, I, off the heels of the end of season one, you've got Bradley Jackson as well having to, you know, pick up, you know, to do the show essentially on her own. You know, she's been left at her own devices and have a new partner. Um, so everyone's dealing with their own identity crisis, you know, of sorts, you know, and, uh, so, and then we have a new head of a news division, a new, a new network news, uh, CEO rather. And, uh, so there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, everyone trying to figure out where they, where they stand in this environment and trying to figure out who they are. And, and they're all preoccupied with the perception of the world on them. Everybody's, uh, deeply obsessed with how everyone thinks who, about them. So there is a new anchor uh, in the morning show, Eric. Um, yes. What do you think? What do does uh, Yanko think about Eric? You know, I think I, I think he he doesn't feel threatened by uh, by Eric in any way. I don't think Yanko. I don't think had any ambitions to be an anchor himself. Whereas others other cast members, you know, uh, uh, Deshaun's character uh, Daniel uh, has has ambitions to be an anchor. I think Yanko was happy to to do the weather. I think what the Yanko's thing is, he doesn't feel he gets any respect. You know, he feels that, you know, with now that you can get the weather on your iPhone and you get a 10 day forecast, he feels almost that the people see him as obsolete. You know, you don't need him anymore. We have an iPhone. Why is he even on there? And he's sort of seen as a bit of a joke. And this is a man who studied, you know, the climate, you know, and has gotten his degrees and, and he feels that it's important. And uh, so I don't think he feels threatened by Eric in any way. And, you know, and, and any of the anchors for that matter. I just think he feels threatened by the fact that his job is, is viewed as, as kind of, you know, a joke in the network. Thank you very much for your time. And actually, I think you're right. In Cologne, it's going to be a very rainy this weekend. Yes. Wear, so, wear your galoshes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Daniel. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Hi, Hi, Daniel. How are you today? Fine. Hi, Karen. Thanks. I'm fine. I hope you too. Good. Yeah. I'm here from Cologne in Germany. Where are you right now? I am in Los Angeles and, you know, enjoying the beautiful weather. What's the weather like in Cologne? I imagine it's fantastic. Yeah, actually, today it was fantastic, but now it's night. And oh. <laughs> so it's, it's, getting, it's getting cold outside. Yeah, it's getting cold and dark. I already talked to Yanko and he gave me some advices for... <laughs> <laughs> On how to handle the weather. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure it was something like get cozy and read a book is probably what Yanko gave you. <laughs> that's, that's actually true. So your character, Mia, is a key figure in the morning show, especially in the first season. And so what is happening in season two? She is still in the morning show. There's a new host. There's a lot of changes. So how would you describe the work environment in the morning show? Well, uh, when we start season two, Mia Jordan has been promoted to the executive producer job at the morning show, which is extraordinary, right? She is holding on to the brass ring. She is hitting up against the glass ceiling, but she is 
standing on a glass cliff because she's been uh, offered this opportunity when the morning show is actually in a lot of trouble. It's very challenged. And so when we start uh, season two, she is grappling with, with how to get better ratings, how to deal with all the different personalities, the challenges uh, that come to an executive producer through the filter of gender politics and race politics. And we travel with her uh, up to episode 10 uh, as she leads her television news show through a lot of difficult times. So um, it's an exciting arc. I love what the writers and the producers decided to do with Mia this season. It gave me an opportunity to engage and discuss um, areas and, and of my character that we don't talk about in season one around her race, about what it is to be an African-American woman doing this job. Um, I had great collaborators in, in Greta Lee and Carrie Aaron and, and Deshaun Terry and Mark Duplass and, and uh, Nestor Carbonell. Um, so I, I'm really interested in what the audience thinks about the story. I think it's bold. I think it's daring. Um, and I think that we, we really brought it season two. So what do you think does the other characters think about Mia? You know, I think that the other characters in the show, it's my experience that uh, it, it's a very similar to experience to what I think African-American women go through. I think they're perceived as very capable and very strong. But um, what I think the audience gets to see of Mia that the other characters don't is they see Mia's vulnerability. They see her shame. They see moments where she is really um, struggling with how to navigate through all of her emotions and her feelings and still present herself as a professional woman in uh, in the workplace. And um, uh, it's a great, uh, interesting, disparate sort of um, emotional landscape to bring to the audience where you know they see things, uh, but she keeps herself together in a kind of a specific way. So, um, uh, yeah, that's what I think that that the uh, that the characters see about her. So your character Mia is an executive producer. Would she have any do and don'ts for someone who's want to be a good morning TV host? Uh, yes. Do do number one, be on time. <laughs> Show up, all right, for work. Number one, um, and number two, um, uh, you know, d don't say anything that's going to get you canceled. Um, that, that's the, the, those are the big do's and that's the big don't. Just those two things. If you could do that, Mia's gonna love you as, an, as, as, a, as a host on The Morning Show. <laughs> Great, thank you very much. I'm really looking forward to season two of The Morning Show. Thank you.